What's up, YouTube? It's Coach Corey, and today I'm going to rank all the brawlers from best to worst from 1 to 19. And before I get into that, I do just want to preface it by saying, I've said this before, but one of the best things about Brawl Stars is depending on the event and the map changes what brawlers are good. So just because a brawler is ranked low on my list doesn't mean it's not good at certain things. It probably means it's not good at many things as far as maps, events, but it doesn't mean it's not very good at some. And on the other side of the coin, the ones at the top of the list are probably very good at a lot of things, right? All right, so let's get into it. And let's start out with the bottom three brawlers in the game, the worst three, and then we'll go up at the top and work our way down. So at number 17, I have Jessie. Now Jessie got a big buff with her recent star power, but she's still not the most versatile brawler. She's good to great in smash and grab. She's now better in bounty. She's pretty good in bounty. She's a little bit better in brawl ball, a little bit better in heist, and a little bit better in showdown, but she's still not great or good options on those events. She's usable, but not good in my opinion. She's a good boss in boss brawl. She's okay in Robo Rumble, not bad. But overall, she's not the most versatile brawler, and without her turret, she's pretty weak. So, I mean, her chain shot's not bad, but until she gets her turret, it can be hard for Hill to deal a good amount of damage. But let's move on. Let's go on to 18. We got a one-hit wonder. We got Piper at 18. Piper is, in my opinion, the best brawler in Bounty, but besides that, she's not very versatile. She's not bad in smash and grab. I don't think she's that great in smash and grab because the team comps she fits well in tend to be not the best team comps. But like on Crystal Cavern, she's a great option. Good use of her star power there. But on some other events, she's not the best. She's very good at killing one or two people. She's good at 1v1s. But other than that, she has a slow reload time. So her DPS isn't the best overall. She's not the most versatile. So that's why she's at 18. Now at the worst... Brawler in the game, in my opinion, is another bit of a one-hit wonder, similar to Piper. Good at one thing, not good at much else. I'll give you a second to guess. Okay, so, it's Poco. Poco, in my opinion, is the worst brawler in the game. Now, Poco is very good in smash and grab, probably the second best gem carry in the game, in my opinion, and is a good overall option. But besides smash and grab, Poco is at best good. And even then, that's a bit of a stretch sometimes. So Poco can be good on a few bounty maps and can be okay in Brawl Ball, depending on the team comp, but not very good in Showdown, not very good in Heist, not very good in Robo Rumble, just okay in Boss Brawl. So you're seeing a theme here. Poco is not very good to just okay in a lot of things. And that's why Poco is ranked at 19. I really think Poco needs a little bit extra, but... I think this is just sort of how Poco is, not the most versatile in that sense, can deal, can hit a couple people, but still not a lot of overall damage. So that's why Poco is at number 19, the worst brawler in the game. So let's go up to number one. Now, who do you think is the best brawler in the game? Now, this guy actually got some nerfs recently, but that's not stopping him from being as strong as he is. And I'm going to give you a second just to guess. All right, so the best brawler in the game is Colt. In my opinion, Colt is the best brawler in the game. Even though he got a little bit of nerfs recently, he got a reload speed nerf and he got a small range nerf. It's not enough. Now, he actually got a low-key buff, and I think this was accidental, but I'm pretty sure earlier to the most recent balance changes... Colt was actually slower than Crow, just slightly with his star power. You know, it makes him faster, but I still think he was slower than Crow, and that's what it seemed like in videos and in playing. But now he's the same speed as Crow, so he low-key got buffed as well. So, with Crow's movement speed combined with his ability to deal damage, it makes he's very easy to hit shots with, and his super is very versatile, and it breaks walls. It's a very long range. Colt is the best brawler in the game. He's good in almost pretty much, he's good in every single game mode. And he's just such a good option. 
He's got a long range and he moves very fast so he can dodge easily. He can catch up to you. He can get to the objectives faster. He can break down walls. He's a very versatile brawler. He does a ton of damage and that's why he's the best brawler in the game in my opinion. Now, also, or not also, going on to number two, a similar brawler is Ricochet. So Ricochet, another high damage brawler with his star power. He has the most potential for damage in the game, and that's why he's at number two. Damage is something that applies to any game mode, and if you can deal a ton of it, you're definitely good no matter the circumstances. So it may be a little map dependent on maps where Ricochet has bounced options he is a very good option there are some maps where maybe it's not as good but otherwise a lot of maps have good bounce potential so ricochet is a very strong brawler and the ability to deal damage cannot be underrated and that's why he is at number two he is very good in that sense and it applies to a lot of different scenarios all right now at number three another brawler that's been subject to a couple nerfs recently but they weren't very big ones now, number three is Crow. So with the most recent update, his uh, jump speed got heavily increased. So it's now very fast. So he jumps in very fast. And this is a huge buff to Crow because what this allows him to do, if he jumps in right next to you and if he hits you with all three daggers, that's a ton of damage. That's almost shelling level damage combined with his poison. So that's a big deal. So he's able to jump in, be very aggressive. And if he does enough damage, he can jump back out. No brawler has that versatility. Now he's also able to dodge shots. He has great healing denial. He's good for a lot of objectives because of that. So he's a very versatile brawler. He's good in a lot of different scenarios. And that's why he's at number three. So moving on to number four, we're going to start to see some throwers soon. And at number four, we have Barley. Now Barley didn't get a huge buff from the recent balance changes with his star power. It's definitely a good star power. He heals up. It makes him allows to be more aggressive, but he's just good in so many different scenarios. The ability to throw over walls keeps him safe, and he's very easy to hit shots with. His attack has such a wide radius, it's hard to avoid, so he's a good amount of healing denial as well. And his super is very strong, he can be used in different scenarios. He can be used to push enemies back by having a wide radius, or you can make it a little smaller and deal a ton of damage. So he's a strong brawler overall. He's good in a lot of different game modes. He's good in pretty much every single one. So Barley is deserving of his number four ranking. So now we're getting into a sort of a thrower. He sort of throws things, but not over walls. And that's Spike. Spike got a huge buff with his recent star power. His star power heals him up whenever he's in a super... And part of the reason this is such a big buff is because of how wide the radius is of his super. So now, if you see a spike with his super and he's maxed, you have to be very careful. You can't get too close to a spike with a super because otherwise he can keep you in it and you're going to be stuck because you're slowed down. And then all he has to do is walk in it. And while you're taking damage, he's healing up. So it's a very strong star power. It's a very strong super. So Spike is makes him very useful in a lot of different scenarios. He's now a lot better in showdown since he can heal up. And he's good in a lot of different game modes as well. That is why Spike is at number five. So going on to number six, you might be seeing a pattern here. All of these guys have a good amount of range. And at number six is no exception. We have Brock. Barack's super is very versatile. It can break walls, hit multiple enemies, and deal a good amount of damage. And his main attack is no joke either. It does a good amount of damage. And his star power, I think we had to get used to it a little bit. It did get a buff, which I think was needed. Um, you can now use it as sort of a healing denial. You can place it in areas where people are likely to go, and they either have to walk in it and they can't heal for another you know, couple seconds, or they're going to take that damage, or they have to avoid it. So that's the options, and I think Brock, um, he's very good in that sense. He's a little underrated, I think, in my opinion, but he's still a strong brawler, and he's good in a lot of different events, and that's why you see him having such a high ranking. All right, let's go on to number seven. Number seven, we have Tar. Now, Tar is an interesting brawler. Um, I think Tar, without her super, is not a very strong brawler. In fact, her damage isn't that high. But one of the reasons she's so strong is her super can pull multiple people in. It stops them from whatever they were doing. They can't escape. And then there's a shadow on top of them that's hard to hit and moves very fast, has the same speed as Crow. 
and Tara's attack hits multiple people. So if Tara can pull in two people, that's a game changer that could easily win you any objective. You get control of the map and not many brawlers have that ability. And while Tara does much more damage at close range, her main attack has a good amount of range, so if she's not able to get close to you, she can still chip away at you while she builds up her super, and then once she has it, she can use that to help make her next super easier to get and deal a lot of damage. So Tara is very versatile because of that, because damage is king. It's key, and it helps you be good in a lot of different game modes, and that's why Tara has a good ranking at number 7. Alright, so now... We're getting to the last thrower at number 8 is Dynamite. Dynamite got an interesting star power where if he lands on or is standing on top of any of his Dynamite sticks, he jumps. Now, there are a couple of different scenarios that are useful for this. In Showdown, you can jump over walls to either escape or chase after people. Uh, you can use it in Heist to get to the objective a little easier by jumping over walls. You can use his star power to avoid attacks like Brock Super or other people throwing stuff at you. It can definitely be useful in that sense. Now, it can also be a little... You know, not helpful if you have a melee brawler on top of you and you're trying to hit him, but you accidentally jump, and then all of a sudden you're going the wrong direction. And it is a little bit hard to use, but throwers are very versatile, and they're useful in a lot of different game modes. The ability to throw over walls just gives them a good advantage. Now, while Dynamite, unlike his other thrower buddies, it's a little harder for him to hit his shots, but they do more damage. So he's still a pretty good option, and he's a decent option in a lot of places. All right, moving on to number nine. This brawler was a little lower in my last ranking video, but got an interesting star power buff, and that's Bo. So Bo can see very far in a lot of, uh, if there's bushes, has extra range for the bushes, and her teammates benefit, his teammates benefit from that as well. Now, Bo, because of that, is very map specific, but on those maps, Bo is a clear, very good option, and that's why you see Bo with this decent ranking. So, Bo, oh, and additionally, got the uh, extra knockback from the mines, and that was a good buff to Bo. I think that was very needed. Now, Bo does a good amount more damage. The ability to interrupt people cannot be underrated. It's definitely a good ability. All right, now at number 10. We have the newest brawler in the game who honestly when it was first released, and of course it's Daryl, when Daryl was first released was not very good, but they buffed Daryl, I think there was good buffs, it's now easier to hit his shots, and of course the melee brawlers Daryl, Bull, and El Primo all got a move speed buff, so it's now easier to get in close range with Daryl, so if additionally Daryl's a little crazy, He's the only brawler in the game where you can really die, and then as soon as you respawn, you can get right in on the action, and that makes him very unpredictable as an enemy. You never really know if Daryl's going to super in right next to you, or if he's going to come next to you, and if a, you cannot underrate a brawler behind you in the spawn, it makes it very hard, and you can push enemies into each other, into your teammates, and that's why Daryl is pretty good, and he's very versatile as well at number 10. Now we're going to see a pattern here. At number 11 is El Primo, and at number 12 we have Bull. We got the melee brawlers all in a row here, and I think they deserve this middle-of-the-pack ranking. Now before they got their movement speed buffs, they honestly probably would have been very low on my ranking list. As you see before, a lot of these long-range guys got damaged buffs, so before they got that movement speed buff, those melee brawlers were just dying a lot faster than they were before the update. But now that they can move a little faster, they're able to get in closer to the enemies, they can dodge shots a little easier, they can get behind walls, get to cover sooner. So these guys are pretty good and they can't be underrated. They are definitely map specific, you have to be a little bit picky, they need some sort of cover for the most part. But once they get their super, you know, they can charge into the enemy and build up their super again because of that. And that's why they're definitely pretty good and they're a little bit versatile, but they are a little map specific. Alright, but let's move on to number 13. The 13th Beth Brawler in the game is Shelly. So Shelly to me is a little underwhelming. So while you see all those long range guys getting damage buffs, this is where Shelly suffered a little bit and has dropped in my rankings. Shelly is very versatile with the ability to deal a lot of damage at close range and her super slows people down and breaks walls and boxes, which is definitely useful. But now Shelly's more map specific as she dies a little bit sooner since those other guys deal more damage. And it's not like Shelly got a health or movement speed buff. So Shelly is a little bit lower than she was before. But on certain maps, she's still very strong. So on those maps, you can't underrate her. Now at 14, a little bit similar, but got some buffs recently, is Nita. So Nita, when she has her bear, is a very strong brawler. 
And Nita doesn't deal a lot of damage, but she does have a fast reload speed. So those low health guys, Nita can actually take care of them pretty quick if she can get in range. So on some maps, Nita is a very strong option. And but the one thing with Nita is she sort of relies on her teammates or her bear to be able to kill enemies because otherwise she doesn't do a lot of damage. She sort of has sneak up on them and then it even takes a good amount of time because her shot doesn't deal a lot of damage. It does have a fast reload speed, so it's definitely useful and she's not bad. I don't want to underrate her, but I think she's definitely at a good place at 14 and I probably wouldn't rank her much higher. Now at 15, we have one of the most hotly debated brawlers in the community right now. A lot of people really think he needs a buff and that's Mortis. Now, I think Mortis is a little underrated. His star power is very strong, especially late in the game. A lot of times with Mortis, if you're an enemy facing a Mortis, you think, okay, here's a Mortis. He's at medium health. All I got to do is hit a couple shots, and this Mortis is no problem. He's easy. He doesn't do a lot of damage. He's low health. It'll be fine. But then all of a sudden, he heals up, and he's at close to full health, and then he kills you, and he's got another soul, and he's healed up again. So Mortis is definitely a pretty good option on some maps. He's great in Brawl Ball. He's good in Smash and Grab on some maps. He's good in some Bounty maps. He's definitely better than before. But without his star power, he probably is the worst brawler in the game. So I think he deserves his number 15 ranking. All right, now the last one I haven't covered, maybe you can guess it, it is Pam. So Pam in my opinion, is easily the best brawler in Smash and Grab. The ability to heal up is unparalleled like any other brawlers. She's able to carry gems so well, has a ton of health, and has more healing than anyone else. So she's easily the best gem carrier option in Smash and Grab. But besides Smash and Grab, she's not that great. She's good on some bounty maps, and you can use her in some other events. But I think there's usually better options than Pam. Besides Smash and Grab, she's really just not that strong. All right, guys. So that is my brawler ranking list. Let me know in the comments whether you agreed with it or you thought some other brawlers should be ranked higher or maybe some should be ranked lower. Let me know what you think. Now, I do want to send out a reminder. I still want to do my montage series where, you know, montage top plays. So, guys, record your clips. Become YouTube famous. Yeah, man, record your clips. Send them in to bstopplays at gmail.com. And of course, I got to give a shout out to Jeffrey and Joey Sip for helping me make the rankings. Thank you, guys. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you later.